Welcome here to a big night of fights. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside my ringside partner, Teddy Atlas. Looking forward to all the action today, and we're just about set for it. He's got a target on his opponent from the moment he steps out of that locker room to every step he takes during this ring walk, you can see exactly what's in his scope. Joe Frazier is so attentive when it comes to this moment here. This is where everything he's done, all the hard work he's put in, comes down to one singular moment of concentration. Remember, guys, obey my commands at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch your When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. When a high stamina fighter is fighting another guy who's very well conditioned, is there any tendency for maybe some doubts to creep into his mind? Yeah, there always are. Because you always want to have the edge. We're human beings. Boxers are no different. They want to say they have a little edge in that area. But they need to know that this is exactly what they're ready to do. Comes with the right. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. If there was a baseball umpire around, he'd call that a strikeout by Joe Frazier. Scored well with that right hand to the body. Left to the body. Frazier's defense. Is it ever good? Finish Look at how up. easy he's able to block those punches. Good, solid right hand he lands there. Good job. It was sudden. It was fast. It was direct by Joe Frazier. A headshot blocked. Halfway through round number one. And he engages in the clinch. Well, we know Frazier took the Olympic gold, but let's go back further than that. So growing up in 1940s and 1950s, Buford, South Carolina, to poor sharecroppers. That defines you. Yeah, that stays with you. And that is something that reminds you, at the right time, why you're in that ring. one that's a big uppercut that just crashed home not what he was looking for that's a miss right there by Joe Frazier we're seeing a lot of work to the body here early on by him Teddy is that a certain mentality these guys that commit to being a body puncher yeah because they understand that the body punching you know, that's not something that's glorious. That's not something that, you know, like a great left hook on the chin, bang, it gets results right away. They understand that that's something that pays off later and something you got to start early and stay with. 
He's committing to the work downstairs. He puts forth a right hand. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue or red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Make him pay for his misses. Don't look for just big punches, okay? Use your speed. Double up your punches. I want to see combo. I got more. Here we go. Round two is underway. Good step back counter punch there. Good looking uppercut that time. Scoring with the right hand by Joe Frazier. Able to land another power shot early on here, Teddy. Does he have to worry about trying to keep up this pace? No, I don't think so. If he keeps at this pace, he's not going to be around to worry. Straight right was lined up, but he missed. There he is from long range using that jab. So if you're on the outside, say at a picnic, you want to keep those insects away, you use insect repellent. While you're on the outside as a fighter, you want to keep your opponent away, that jab, that's the way to go. Let it go! <laughs> Needs to improve that accuracy, missed with the headshot. What concerns you when you're standing opposite Joe Frazier? Joe Frazier. Everything about him, his attitude, his discipline, his left hook, his ability to keep going from bell to bell. Well, supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. Turn that hook over, but couldn't turn it into a connect. Scores with the jab there. Joe Frazier's tagged by that power punch. Oh, what a devastating hook by Joe Frazier. That's a momentum changer upstairs. Move your head. Well, he's committed to the left hand, and it's paying off here. Frazier showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. <laughs> Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. Unable to score with the hook. Final 10 seconds of round number two. A nice crisp hook after a fine defensive effort. Look, you stand straight up. Move that body. You need to move that body. Stay tight, keep jabbing and hitting him. Keep him in front, okay? Don't let him move around too much. But the rip. And round number three is underway. Oh, what a left hand. He just got rocked, and he's still taking punches. The only way right now is to grab on a little bit, stop this flow. Good snapping jab. That's what you need to get inside. Hey, Joe, you're going to rob a bank. You need a smoke screen so the guards don't see you coming. You want to get inside? 
use the jab. Good counter punch. I loved how he moved off to the side and landed it. Yeah, that's real smart. That's something that you teach. Big right Shake hand. It Shake it off. Keep moving. Get out there. They got to him. He hurt him there. Frazier's opponent is trying to smother him, but instead he's pushing him away, trying to land a big shot. And he's lucky he's getting away with it, Joe, that the referee's not warning him for this. What a shooting hook that was by Joe Frazier. Not able to land the headshot. Always a treat to see Joe Frazier in action. He would be an all-time great no matter what era he fought in. Unfortunately, his career paralleling the era of Muhammad Ali and really defined by that yin and yang, that teeter-totter of him and Ali. Fred Astaire would say, fortunately, Ginger Rogers was around because he had a partner. Ali was that partner that helped define Frazier. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Uh, Tried the hook, didn't get it. You see the defensive guard of Joe Frazier there. That's what I want to see. Not much action as he just ties up. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. You're not focused, sir. Got this one. You're still not moving enough. Move, move. You need to keep that head moving. Keep moving, keep moving. All of a sudden, the tables turn. Frazier's rocked. What's good for you is good for him. Nice job there, hooking to the body. Let it go. Come on. Scored well up top. Last 10 seconds. Of oh! What a nice job by Frazier's opponent that time. Getting right into the kitchen against Joe Frazier and smoking him. Signifying the end of the round. You good? You all right? Breathe. Good. Now listen. You threw a wide punch out there and he caught you. Tighten up. Listen to me. Your best defense is to throw punches. You need to throw more punches. That'll take them away. You gotta give me a double jab. You're not giving me the double jab. You're only giving me one. So three rounds in the books here. Frazier's probably feeling good about what he's accomplishing because his intent was to go out there and throw punches. But I don't think he's feeling too good if he looks at your scorecard. He hasn't won a round. No, because he hasn't been accurate. Yeah, he's throwing punches, but they're fat punches. They're wide punches. Not getting to the target. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. Frazier's got to prove a few things here. Number one, he's got to prove to his opponent that he's on good ground after being knocked down in the last round. But he's also got to prove it to the referee, too. Yeah, he does. And his corner. Because his corner, I just noticed, they put that towel over their shoulder. So they know the condition their fighter's in. They know their responsibility. And they're ready to act on it. Able to land with the right. Now we see some blood coming from George Frazier's nose. And now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Keep moving, keep moving. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. You know, we're early in this fight, but Frazier's energy may come into question soon. He's throwing a lot of punches, Teddy. Yeah, and his mental energy, too. I'm wondering if he's getting a little discouraged that his opponent is not showing a lot of effects from all those shots. 90 seconds to go in round number four. 
And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. Teddy, there are few fighters in the history of the game that are more clearly defined by one single punch as Joe Frazier is with the left hook. If you go into McDonald's, what are you going to find? Hamburgers. You go to a Joe Frazier fight, left hooks. Really frustrating his opponent now as he's so defensively sound, it doesn't make for an easy target. No, it doesn't. And it makes for a very frustrating night for his opponent. I see his opponent now, if you notice, he's getting a little tentative. He's afraid to let the punches go because when he misses, he's worried he's going to leave an opening. Able to land the hook to the head. For the well-being of their fighter, his corner may need to stop this fight. Yeah, the well-being of now and tomorrow because this is the kind of beating that's going to impact him tomorrow, take his confidence away. Maybe oh, never be the up, same fighter up. if they don't stop it at the right time. He just missed that shot up top. Unload! Fourth round now with its last 10 seconds. And round four comes to an end. Joe Frazier's defense is going to need to shine when he gets back out there. I mean, just look at the close-up of that cut we're seeing. Yeah, he's got to use his legs. You're right, Joe. He's got to get out there and buy some time for those medicines to work. Round number five has arrived. Nice block. Tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Move your head! Come on! Give it Gets rid of that body shot. Uppercut! Uppercut! Halfway into round number five here. And now just wasting away some time with that clinch. Good defense just covering up down low. You're not focusing. This stage of a fight, Teddy, these very early moments, how much in your training career will you stress to a guy to try to go to the body? Very much, because it sets up things later on, and it takes away things that he's trying to do. You know, he's trying to move his upper body. You go downstairs, takes a lot of that away. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Back to the 
Coming to the end of round number five, last 10 seconds. <laughs> Frazier's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. And round five comes to an end. We hear about guys being calm and cool when the pressure's on. With that eye completely shut, the pressure is on. Yeah, this is where you're really ultimately being tested as a fighter, as a human being, as a man. Frazier's corner was giving him a lot of encouragement after that last round. He clearly won that last round, and they know now this is a chance to get back in this fight. Yeah, they were just in a storm. You know, they were out in a boat in a storm. There was a lot of waves coming. You know, it was, it was a little iffy for a while there, but they got past the worst of it. Now there's a little bit of calm sea. Now what you got to do is put those sails up and move forward. Teddy, there are opportunities that are here for him, aren't there? Yeah, counterpunch opportunities because he's got an opponent who's walking in a little bit. Now he has a chance to start to chuck something back at him a little. the halfway point of round number six. And he's holding. Shot, but he parries it away. Here's something that's a key factor now, and that is his ability to simply defend himself. He's doing a wonderful job at it. Yeah, he is, and that gives him the ability to always be fresh and confident round after round since he's not taking a lot of punishment. <sighs> seconds of the sixth round. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Joe Frazier. And round six comes to an end. Frazier, well, he's back in the corner, which is critical in terms of trying to stop the bleeding on that cut. But it's also critical because they need to put forth a new defensive game plan. Yeah, they have to make sure that they buy some time here and start moving their head, using their legs, tying up a little bit, doing anything to kill the clock and not get caught on that cut anymore. You get close, uppercut and hook. Back to action here at the start of this round, which is just part of what has been a big, wow, impactful short hook got to him. That big shot, and he goes down again. Will he get up from this? One, two, three, four, five. 
Joe Frazier going to try to get himself right back in this fight again after being knocked down. Good job protecting himself. Blocks that belt line well. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. Harry brings a jab right hand. Frazier showing you a little defensive skill there. Able to move away from that punch. He's showing very good footwork. He's showing fine defensive movement here. But as for the opponent, how do you solve that? Well, you got to make believe you're a football player. You got to make believe you're a linebacker in football. You go down the line with that running back. You don't go following him around the place. You make sure you move laterally. That's exactly what he's got to do. He's got to cut that ring down, take space away. At the halfway point of round seven. Hitting his mark there, going upstairs. Yeah, give him one. one, two, one, two. Look at that combination by Joe Frazier. Let it go. Accuracy an issue there. Didn't land that straight right hand. Unable to score with the hook. Body shot, body shot. Relax, relax. <laughs> Ten seconds to go in this round. I like this kind of defense, Teddy. I like this kind of guy that just says, go ahead, think you can try to hit me up top. You can't. Great movement. A very good movement, very good vision. He sees everything. To do this, you have to be very calm. He's very calm. He's very in control. He hooks to the body and hooks to the head, all right? Hook to the body and to the head. All right, listen, you need to create more counters, okay? Slip his punch, then throw a straight right down the middle. I need you to box him. Wait for him and boom! Round number eight, and Teddy's scorecard only tells part of the story. Frazier's not only down on the scorecards, but he's been battered and bruised. Yeah, it's at the point now that if you're the corner man and your responsibility is to get your fighter ready to win, but once that looks like it's not going to happen, now you have a new responsibility. Protect your fighter. Stop the fight if he doesn't have a chance to win. Work the body! Looking good. <laughs> Parries that punch away. Teddy, when you've been in the corner in your career and you have a charge, who is not making a lot of contact, what do you tell him? The first thing I tell him, Joe, is shorten up your punches a little bit. The other thing I tell him is he's making you miss, so you know what? Faint him a little bit. Get a false move out of him. Get a premature move. And when he moves, then time him. Now you're going to catch him. Keep working the jab. Good, good. <sighs> 90 seconds to go, halfway through round eight. You got this 
one. Blocked by Joe Frazier. Keep moving, keep moving. Last ten seconds of the eighth round. End of the round is upon us, and we have a fighter in front of us who just looks gassed. He looks tired. Now, Teddy, what can he do to overcome that when this fight starts back up? Well, first of all, this is where you're searching to those corners that you're not forced to search. Kind of like when you were a kid and your mother told you to clean your room and go into those little nooks and crannies where you never knew there was dirt. Now you got to start looking into nooks and crannies inside yourself places you didn't know were there before. You better find them. You better find them quick. The action starts up again, but it's only favored one man. Hard to see this fight going the distance based on what we've witnessed so far. Frazier's got to be careful here, Teddy, because he can't stay like this. Yes, he's throwing punches, but not being effective at all. No, he's not. He's not landing. And that's bad for the scorecards, but as he continues doing this, it's going to be bad for his chin because he's going to start now getting countered. As time goes by, the more he misses, now his opponent's going to start doing the other part. He's going to come back and take advantage of those misses. He missed with that headshot. Well timed by Joe Frazier. He took a step back, landed the counterpunch. Exactly what he wanted to do. Good job. Good counterpunch. And he just holds on there. Ninety seconds into the ninth round. Come on, get focus. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Good job staying away from the danger there. Good way to protect the midsection. Gets rid of that effort. Last 10 seconds of the ninth round.
Frazier's all of a sudden finding his stride here. In that last round, we saw vast improvement. He's still down on your scorecard, right, Teddy? Yeah, he have him down a little bit. But he's, he's making a comeback here based on what we just saw. He's doing what he needs to do. You know, he's picking up the pace a little bit, and he's starting to get into the right range. To me, before, he was too far back. Now he's taking the steps to put himself in position where he can start doing the things he needs to do, get back in his fight. I want to see that straight right. Throw the jab, then straight down the middle. You got that? Jab, jab, right. Teddy, what do you think here as we start this round? I mean, you watch what he did in that last round, and you got to think that he can get himself back into this fight. Well, that's how he's got to be thinking it. That's kind of what he's made up of. He's not a front runner. You know, he's not a fast starter anyway. He's the kind of guy that... His real strength is to be able to weigh you down, is to have a great resolve, and to be able to chip away, chip away. He's chipping. on the inside. Just look at the way he is right now, Teddy. Joe Frazier's breathing right through his mouth. His mouth's wide open. That's a telltale sign. Yeah, he's spent. I mean, we know what he can't do now. It looks like he can't really throw punches. You know, he can't keep a pace. But what can he do? He can grab on. He can hold. He can get time off the clock. Halfway through round 10. And now a little combination punching, landing both shots. Back to the bus. Needs to improve that accuracy, miss with the headshot. Turn fire that time. Sound defense. Good block that time by Joe Frazier. Not able to land the headshot. not gonna stand here and watch you take those shots you understand me let's see some defense and more punches the jab works good when you use it you don't use it enough you're looking good you're looking good he's tired look at him he's so fucking tired he's got nothing left now listen to me I need you to double up your punches and keep the lead, all right? It's over. It's been a good fight throughout in the start of round number 11 here. You can see the lead that he's built on Teddy's scorecard, but he needs to be careful. This fight is not a given right now. No, Joe, what you just said showed me you're not going to be a trainer because maybe by saying he needs to be careful, if he's too careful, guess what? The other guy comes right forward and gets right back in his fight. Anybody, head, head, body. 
Frazier's thinking defense first right now, Teddy. I mean, you can just see it in him. He's thinking strictly, hey, what happened earlier, I don't want that to happen again. And that's what his opponent wants you to think. So that's all you need to know, that you can't think that way, especially since that's not his style. Joe, if he was a counterpuncher, it'd be okay. You know, your defense creates offense when you're a counterpuncher. He is not that kind of fighter. He can't win this way. Ties up there. Kick move, kick move. Oh, he's doing great. Able to dismiss that body shot. <laughs> oh, he just misses with that headshot. What a difference from corner to corner as he sits on his stool. He knows that he is in complete control of this fight peppering his opponent with power shots. Well, it's been like that all night long. Anything he throws finds a target. Don't fight his fight. Jab and move. You have to double jab, all right? He's timing you every time you come in. I want to see that double jab. Double jab right here. As another round gets underway, it gets us thinking, how much more of this will we see? Hard to envision this fight going the distance with how lopsided it's been. together landing two shots there he took a go of it to the body but came up empty jump on him nice <laughs> Showing you some defense there with the block. You see him holding on. <laughs> Able to get rid of that one. Just an excessive amount of holding here. Just much too much clinching. 
Good block. Get out of the way from those punches. Move that hand. Off to the side. A little swing and a miss going upstairs. Joe Frazier. He didn't see that left hand. And it oh, a big shot comes home for him. Can he beat the count? I don't think so here, Teddy. Now I know where they got that saying. Falling like a sack of potatoes. the fight. Frazier's a knockout victim. He couldn't beat the count. That woke up the fans. Wow, did that wake up the fans. A fight that was assured of heading to the judges' scorecards. It ends by knockout. That's why as a trainer, you like a fight that's close, that's closely contested. There's a little danger going on because then you know that your guy's going to stay alert. Here, there was no danger. He fell asleep, and now he is asleep. It was a good one indeed. And for Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time at the fights.